Do you know all the rules for writing a canon effectively at the upper octave? Then take paper and pen, watch this video and make Bloom the composer hidden in you. Thanks to the narrow composition. Composition meets neuroscience in an incredible cutting-edge method for learning composition thanks to passive learning. After music, my greatest passion is neuroscience because only if you know how the mind works, you can use it to its full potential. Thanks to the numerous high-level studies I have carried out in the field of the mind, in particular with the writings of Napoleon Hill, Joseph Murphy, Russell Conwell, Joe Vitale, Dale Carnegie, Carol Dweck, Navi Goddard, and above all, HCE, Human Connection Engineering, an Excellence World Championship of the Italian House of the Functioning of the Mind by Paolo Brasacchiello and Luca Mazzilli, I have created this super effective method that allows you to learn composition in a passive way. How does it work? Take a pen and paper, watch the video and copy everything I write exactly step by step. I guide you by staying close to you, in every single passage, in every solution, in every technique. You learn by assimilation. Even if you don't understand everything right away is not a problem. Working with me through this method, after several exercises you will already have developed remarkable skills. In fact, you are not learning through rules, but thanks to your mirror neurons which take each piece of information as a seed and plant it in your subconscious mind. Over time, will make them sprout, transforming composition from an intellectual act to a natural action. Enjoy this experience at the highest level. Download the PDF I created for you directly from my Patreon page. Thanks to this PDF you practice on the same terrain that I work on with you in this video, because this will allow you to lay a solid foundation in counterpoint and composition. I still underline the importance of copying exactly step by step everything I write. In fact, only in this way you can learn thanks to the subconscious learning that impresses in your mind in a more fastly way if you receive the same stimulus at the same times from all your senses. View, watching this video and writing, hearing, listening to the result of what we wrote, touch, writing yourself on the paper, and also smell and taste if, after you wrote the canon, you want to snort or eat the shit. I remind you to join my Patreon, where you can find the PDF that I write here now with you, and many new amazing and stratospheric videos of improvisation elements every week. Well, now that you have paper and pen, let's take our fantastic tabula compositoria and let's start with the video. Okay guys, today can at the upper octave. So first of all, as we used to do, let's see what are the notes that are in consonance with the first note. So let's write our table, bass clef, copy with me, so bass clef, then we have this, that is the D, is the first note of the dux, and this D, because we are, in a, we have a canon at the octave, upper octave, will be in the commas, this note, an octave higher, okay, this is the, the note of the commas, so, our question is, what are all the notes we can write in consonance with this note that are also in consonance with this note? Let's write them. So, we have, obviously, the three here. Then we have, we have the, the three, then this note, that is the sixth, then this note. Then we have the fourth, the fourth because an octave higher with the same note, the fourth inverted is a fifth, so the fifth is a consonance, okay? Then we don't have the fifth because the fifth inverted is a fourth, so the fourth is a dissonance, okay? Perfect. Now we have the sixth that is a third on this note. Six also in this case, according to the Renaissance style, flat six, so minor six. And now, this is going up. Going down, instead we have obviously the unison. Then we have the this note, the three. Then we can have, again, the 
G, that is the fifth than the new D. And then we can have also the octave down in this way. So now let's write our num uh, number table. So up, down, we have the unison that is, that is not up and is not down. So the, the unison in the middle, then we have the three up, the fourth up and the sixth up. Then we have down the three down. Then we have the five down. And we don't have actually here the six down according to the Renaissance style. But if I, I write here a six in Baroque style, it, it can work. So six also down. Remember that this six flat accord, uh, minor six according to the Renaissance tradition also this six is not allowed in the Renaissance style, but depends only on the style you are writing your canon. So, uh, the last interval we have is the octave, because we can leave an octave higher or lower. So, octave in the middle, it means both in the, at the top and then in, at the bottom. So, uh, now let's pass to the second step. So, do you remember what is it? Write the structure. So write, write the structure of our canon based on this table. So, violin clef, okay, treble clef. Now, we start from this D. What note we can write, uh, for example, a G? Can I write an upper fourth? Let's check them. Yeah, we have here a fourth up, so it works. Good. Now, the second note, the third note, that could be, for example, an E. Okay. Can we go a third down? Yes, we can go a third down. Now, let's write another note, for example, a G. Okay, let's write better this E. Okay. G, a third up. Can we write a, a third up? Yeah, we can do it. Perfect. Now, the next note, for example, can be a fifth down, so C. Can we write a fifth down? Let's check them. Let's check it. Yeah, we can. So, now, for example, I want to play, I want to write a fifth up. Can I play a fifth up? No, I can't play a fifth up. So, what can I do in this case? Do you remember our jogging? I add a rest, a rest of one entire measure, because in this way I can use, thanks to this rest, all the consonances and dissonances, melodically, obviously, I want. Now, I want to go a third down, we can do it. Now I want to go a fourth up, we can do it, we already wrote a fourth up at the beginning, so E and A. Now I want to conclude my can, our beautiful can, a fifth down. So we can do it because of this number. So we have now our structure. Let's play it. Oh, sorry. Nice. Now what do we have to do? Do you remember? we have to write diminutions in this way. So, mm, we have here the dukes and here the commas. The dukes, I remember you, that is the leader voice. The leader voice is the voice that has the main melody at the beginning. The commas or follower is the voice that follows the previous voice, the dukes, leader and followers. So, D, G, F, for example, G, okay, then we have to connect this, so this, this can work, then we have to connect G, E to G, 
So we can, for example, play or write this in this way. Perfect. Now, from G to C. So we have here our C or K. Okay. So we can write this a page. Okay, a little important thing, but important thing is, do you remember what I explained to you about the leaps in the second part of the bar? So we have to check that this note, this in the second half of the bar, is in consonance with this, with the second half of the previous bar, and with the second half on the, of the next bar, but not according to the notes we see on this stuff because this is valid for the unison but according to this table comparing them with the notes transposing so not starting with the d necessarily but with the note okay we'll see we'll, i'll show you that in the very in the verify part of this canon now re remember that this is a really important aspect, so you have to verify that these notes are in consonance. Now, let's go on. So we have now the rest, right? Yeah. Our rest. Okay. Then we have G, E, A, D. So G, E, then A, and then D, in this way. Okay. So we have... We can play a diminution here in this way. Then, okay, we can keep this longer note. Okay, and then a conjunction in this way. Perfect. Now let's play, let, let's pass to the third phase, so the verification of the can. So does this can work in two parts? Let's see it. So we have the first measure without note, then we start the canon at the octave, so with this D, an octave higher. As you can see, we have a fifth in this point. It works, so D, G, F, E, D, E, F, G, E, and C. As you can see, here we have eight and ten that is a three so this note this leap is correct according to the rules of the second half of the bar perfect now write with me we have the rest here perfect now we have again okay an octave higher the melody and then this beautiful now before choosing our conclusion let's let's see if this canon works so let's play it So what we can do here, because I like this thing, is writing the conclusion as, in this case, the final note of the dux longer in this way. So the example A of the previous video, example A, yeah, so without the cadence, only keeping the note, the same note, the last note. In the dukes. Perfect, so we have our canon, we don't have problems or troubles or other things to fix in this canon. And let's try now to make a different conclusion with a cadence for practicing. Okay, so we can start here. 
Okay, let's take this bar so A G F E D E in this point right exactly so A Okay now if you want to make a cadence to D obviously because our cadence is in D we can play a cadence to this D so I can prepare this I can use this three for preparing now the distance to sharp so and now here our final cadence in this point two and three according to the P S R rule preparation suspension and resolution what they what are they they are the preparation of the of our suspension the preparation is on the weak bit on a weak bit okay look at this note the preparation is a consonant so a three in this case it is the same note in the suspension of the suspension okay and we we have the preparation in this way of the suspension the suspension is a dissonance always in this case two and the resolution is after the suspension a step down always a step down so okay perfect now let's play again this canon but with this conclusion so okay, from the beginning oh sorry <laughs> I was continue I was uh, reading uh, the upper part so. Perfect, exactly. So I remember you that you can download the PDF in with digital writing that is clear and more helpful more helpful for you from my pattern and also get the access to a lot, a lot, a lot many of other beautiful extra content. So see you in the next video and on Patreon. If you have been watching this video up to the end, I bet you too are fascinated by the world of Partimenti improvisation and historical composition. For us musicians of the 21st century, it's important and fundamental to know these techniques and the way in which the great master of the past used them artfully to compose the extraordinary music we play today. If you master these patterns, you can better understand and interpret what you play. You can compose new music based on these patterns and you can improvise new music from scratch because you know the grammar of this musical language. For that I created Improvisation Elements, a set of several improvisation exercise videos for each of which you can download a PDF to practice whenever you want. Improvisation Elements is an ambitious project and is reserved for those who support my work on Patreon. Every week I upload new Improvisation Elements videos on different topics, sequences, scales, cadences and more. All these videos are organized at the following page. So now subscribe a membership on Patreon, choose the exercise you want to practice and become an improviser.